Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Hannah and let's talk movies. So this is gonna be a bit of a janky video because I know you can hear the AC in the background, but it's in the 90s. We need to have on for the chinchillas, so that's just not an option. And then it's so dark in here because of having to have that back window there, have that whole thing closed and everything, and our lighting in here sucks. So I'm like using this old makeup mirror as a sort of like ring light. It's definitely not bright like at all, but I mean like, here's the difference. So I mean, it's doing something at least and I'm hoping it's a good something. But let's get right into it with these movies. I watched these in March and April of this year. So starting to catch up finally. But the first one is Uncharted. This is directed by Ruben Fleischer. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but he directed the first Venom movie as well as the Zombieland movies. This came out in 2022. It is an action adventure. And I actually rated this three and a half stars. A young, street smart Nathan Drake and his wisecracking partner Victor Sully Sullivan embark on a dangerous pursuit of the greatest treasure never found, while also tracking clues that may lead to Nathan's long lost brother. So this movie is just Tom Holland being Tom Holland while doing Fast and the Furious stunts, and honestly, I love it. This is the perfect movie to just like turn your brain off and enjoy the action. I would consider this a successful video game adaptation. It is better than I was expecting. It is by no means a masterpiece, but it is a fun time. And like, it is just go, go, go. It doesn't try to over explain anything and it doesn't drag because it's just focusing on the action, which I actually did appreciate for the type of movie this is. The cuts between scenes were weird feeling and sometimes they were quite abrupt. This definitely could have used more polish, but I mean, it's not a big blockbuster, but I feel like this movie definitely advertised itself for what it was, and I found it to be fun. Next, I saw Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. This is directed by Sun Hu Park, who also directed the anime. This came out in 2021, is anime fantasy action, and I also gave this three and a half stars. Yuta Okatsu is a nervous high school student who is suffering from a serious problem. His childhood friend Rika has turned into a curse and won't leave him alone. Since Rika is no ordinary curse, his plight is noticed by Satoru Goju, a teacher at Jujutsu High, a school where fledgling exorcists learn how to combat curses. Gojo convinces Yuta to enroll, but can he learn enough in time to confront the curse that haunts him? So I watched this in the original Japanese language, but with French subtitles. So be aware, neither of those are my native language. Personally, I didn't find that it quite lived up to the hype. I do think My Hero Academia Mugen Train is better. Something about the pacing was really off to me. I found myself thinking several times like, oh, this is where the episode is going to end. And then I was just like, oh, no, no, this is a movie. There were an incredible number of fade to black moments and that made scene changes feel awkward. Like it was such a standout to me that it really took me out of the movie when those would happen. The fights were fun and those were by far the best part of the movie, but besides that, the rest just felt like a recap of what the show was about. And I definitely would have preferred it to go into this assuming that you had already watched the anime. Next, I watched The Awakening. This was directed by Nick Murphy, who did the Christmas Carol limited series that I actually really enjoyed. So I was surprised to see that he's the one that did this movie. It came out back in 2011. It's a mystery thriller horror, and I gave it two stars. In 1921, England is overwhelmed by the loss and grief of World War I. Hoax exposer Florin Cathcart visits a boarding school to explain sightings of a child ghost. Everything she believes unravels as the missing begin to show themselves. So I actually had to read my review to remember anything about this movie. Like when I saw The Awakening, I was like, what? What the hell is this? When did I watch this? And it really took me a second to be like, oh, okay, I remember now. So this is definitely a play by numbers horror. It does nothing new. So many elements in the movie were it's this way because the plot needs it to be. So it's super easy to unravel the plot with how thin it is. Editing is awkward. There are lots of scene cuts that feel off or don't make sense. And there are even scenes that don't contribute to like the vibe or the plot at all. There's one in particular, but I can't say exactly what it is because that would be a spoiler. And yes, I care about spoilers for like 
over 10 year old movies. I thought this was okay in the beginning, but as it went on, I did get more and more bored with it. But it followed this like horror formula so hard that I actually found it really easy to call what scenes were going to happen next. And obviously that's never a good sign. Next I watched Turning Red. This is directed by Domi Shi. It came out in 2022, is a fantasy comedy and I give this two and a half stars. 13 year old Mai is experiencing the awkwardness of being a teenager with a twist. When she gets too excited, she transforms into a giant red panda. So this was fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it. I just felt a bit bored throughout personally. I can't really see myself rewatching this one. And this is another where like in Kanto, there isn't like this big bad. It's definitely more family oriented and like resolving those generational trauma issues. This one in particular, I felt caters more to a younger crowd because usually these kind of movies are like, it's for everyone, it's for the family. And so there's kind of that mix of like being for the adults and the children but I felt this definitely leans more toward the younger crowd. And after that, I took a friend's recommendation and watched Strange Magic. This is directed by Gary Rydstrom, came out in 2015, is a fantasy musical, and I gave this three stars. A love potion works its devious charms on fairies, elves, and the swamp-dwelling bog king as they all try to possess the potion for themselves. So the animation here is pretty, but the fairies themselves had like this weird uncanny valley thing happening with their faces. There are a few moments of funny dialogue, but they are so easy to miss. Like you have to watch this with subtitles. And overall, this just felt like an average movie to me. The musical aspect was a bit jarring at first, it's not music that was written like for this movie. It's well-known songs. I think they call it like a jukebox musical, something like that. And I did feel like it was a bit odd in the beginning, but I did get used to it and I felt that it was utilized fine by the end. And finally, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This was directed by Jeff Fowler, who did also direct the first one. This came out in 2022. A lot of these are gonna be new releases. This is a comedy action adventure. And I gave this three stars. After settling in Green Hills, Sonic is eager to prove he has what it takes to be a true hero. His test comes when Dr. Robotnik returns, this time with a new partner, Knuckles, in search for an emerald that has the power to destroy civilizations. Sonic teams up with his own sidekick, Tails, and together they embark on a globe-trotting journey to find the emerald before it falls into the wrong hands. So if it tells you anything, I did not write a review for this movie. I did prefer the first one over this, but I think if you did like the first one, you will like the second one. There's a lot of this movie that's forgettable, but I can specifically think of two like very odd extended scenes where it was just like, why is this happening? And why is it still going? And unfortunately, Sonic is one of the only franchises to have successful video game adaptation movies. So there will definitely be a third one. There was an after credit scene for this as well. Because if we are now on like a downward slope with the quality of the movies, then it's going to be very easy to become uninterested in these very quickly. And that is all for today. These are all just like, the most average of average movies apparently. Like I going through this, I noticed, I was like all of my ratings for these are very similar. But as always, thank you for hanging out with me. It is greatly appreciated. Once again, I apologize for the crappy lighting and the AC noise in the background. But until next time, bonjour and au revoir.